Hi, Keystone Science here. Today we're going to talk about matter and antimatter. Yeah, that too. They're both very similar, but very different at the same time. When we look around us, we see that every tangible thing is made out of matter. This pen, this marker, myself, they're all made out of matter. Now, matter is made up of many different things, such as electrons, quarks, and neutrinos. But they each have their own respective charge. Now, antimatter, on the other hand, is just like matter, except a different charge. For instance, the electron's antimatter equivalent is called the positron, because rather than having a negative charge, it has a positive charge and is represented as E+. Plus. Now, the neutrinos and the quarks also have their antimatter equivalents, known as antineutrinos and anti-quarks. Antimatter is also just like matter, except it just has a different charge. Things can still be built out of it. It's not just an energy. Or is it? Now, that's kind of a hard question, because if it is just an energy, matter is also just energy. A condensed energy. To create antimatter, we also create matter in the process, an exact 50-50 of antimatter and matter. This happens when we use lots of energy condensed into one spot to agitate nothing to become negative one and positive one, or matter and antimatter. Now, this process of getting negative one and positive one out of zero can be also equivalent to get negative a million, or positive a million, or negative infinity and positive infinity out of zero, but it would take quite a bit of energy. Only one one billionth of the amount of energy we currently put into making antimatter and matter can actually be brought out when the ma antimatter touches matter. Now this is probably largely due to many inefficiencies that consume energy rather than all of it going into creating the matter and antimatter. So, why is it that if when we create antimatter and matter, it is perfect 50-50? The universe seems to have a lot more matter than antimatter, or at least we haven't been able to detect very much at all in our observable universe. Well, there are a few theories to sort of deal with this. The person in the white is going to be matter. The person in black is going to be antimatter. In the beginning of the universe, it is thought that there was plenty of antimatter and matter created from a large amount of energy, but for whatever reason, it seemed, as some theories suggest, there was slightly more matter than antimatter, leading, when the matter collides with the antimatter, only a very, very, very small percentage of the entire mass left over, but is all matter not antimatter, and this percentage adds up to the universe we know as today. This is just one of many theories, none of which have been proven or disproven, but other theories include that they are just on the, that the antimatter is just on another side of the universe, or in a completely different universe. When the antimatter and matter collides, they release energy, a lot of which is in gamma rays and photons and all sorts of waves of electromagneticity on the spectrum. Now, if you're confused about why antimatter doesn't violate the law of conservation of mass and energy, it's probably because you've been taught it wrong. Now, we'll be going over the law of conservation of mass and energy and how antimatter plays into that in the next video. So, thanks for watching. Hi, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for weekly science videos. And also, if you have a topic you're wanting to see, go ahead and leave it in the comments and we'll get to it.